Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the Big Bang characters from Zombicide by Seamon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the first and probably only video in this zombie side painting series. And today we are painting the Big Bang characters, oh sorry, no, just the survivors that happen to look a whole lot like the Big Bang characters from Zombie Side. Now I say that this will be the only video in this series and that's because my wife picked this game up second hand for a ridiculous price that we couldn't say no to and it seems like it's got pretty much everything in it that has come with this game. Expansions, Kickstarters, all that sort of stuff. And she has been right into painting this. She has made this her own sort of project while I'm painting everything else that's in our pile of shame at the moment. Um, but because uh, The Big Bang Theory is one of my all time favourite shows, she very very graciously gave me these to paint um, because I was really really excited to, to paint these up to put them on the table so yeah I'm painting these um, but she's painting the rest of them so this will be the only one um, from sort of base uh, zombie side I also um, have the zombie side invader series that's up as well so seeing as the sculpts of these survivors are pretty basic, there isn't too much to get out of this video in terms of just straight up painting. So I was trying to think of something to focus this video on so that there was still something to get out of it. So one aspect of my painting that I think can definitely be improved is how quickly I finish minis. I take way too long from the end of the base coating stage to get them to a point that they're finished. So I reckon I can, I'm pretty efficient when it's just base coating. I can get to the end of that stage pretty quickly. But then once I get onto highlighting and shading and picking out details and all those sorts of things, it really does start to slow down. And I think it just takes way too long from yeah, the end of that base coating stage through to the end for them to go into the box and ready to go out onto the table. Um, I get too lost in, you know, when you're just holding that mini just a couple of inches in front of your face, trying to get the blends um, as smooth as possible, um, picking out, you know, all the, the little highlights, doing too many levels of highlighting. And, you know, once the, the mini goes into on the board and it's only being seen from around the edge of the table, there are things that I've spent time on that really aren't worth it. Now in saying all that I am really really happy with the standard that I can finish them to. I do think they look good once they're on the table but when looking at the number of minis that I do still have to paint across the board games that we've still got sitting there plus the ones that are coming soon um, from Kickstarter this is definitely an aspect of my painting that I want to improve on um, so that I can get through more minis, get more done um, and just yeah, you spend more time playing games rather than just sitting there painting. So for these characters and for this video, I've set myself a one hour time limit for each mini. So there's seven uh, Big Bang characters here. So I'm looking to paint these seven um, characters in seven hours. Now I'm not looking to paint them as quickly as possible. Um, the intent here is to use the full hour and I want to see what I can do in an hour. What standard I can paint to if I give myself one hour to paint um, because these sorts of minis here I would probably typically spend an hour and a half to two hours on these pretty comfortably and so cutting down on that time I'm sort of going to force myself to have to paint in a certain way to obviously cut down on time um, and then yeah, I'm hoping at the end I can see the standard that I can paint to in a, you know, in a, in a shorter time frame so that going Going ahead when painting you know minis in the future I can sort of um, be happy to not um, sort of yeah work on all those little details and the blends and the highlighting to the level that I do because I know that if I do back it off I, I can still paint to a standard that I'm happy with and that looks good on the table 
So seeing as I am obviously painting in a shorter time frame to what I normally do, there were a few things that I did to make sure that I was able to, to keep it to the hour. So first of all, for each of the minis, I had a look over them and came up with just a bit of a plan for how I was going to approach them. So, um, you know, knowing what color each particular part was going to be, so having the paints ready to go, but then also what order I was going to paint all of the different elements in. So start, always starting with the lowest layer and working up from there, so painting it inside out. So for each of these, starting with the skin and then just working up from there until I got to the topmost layer. So with a couple of these, as an example, they might have a t-shirt with a jacket over the top. So I would paint the t-shirt before painting the jacket because in reality, the t-shirt is going underneath the jacket. So if you painted the jacket first, which is going over the top and then finishing with the t-shirt to try and get a clean line where the t-shirt meets the jacket and to have it look as though the t-shirt is going underneath the jacket, you've got to be really, really precise and that's just gonna be a bit of a time suck there. That's gonna slow it down. So by painting the t-shirt first, first of all, um, you don't have to worry too much about getting it neat at the edge of the, the t-shirt because you're gonna paint the jacket over the top anyway, but also when you come back to paint the jacket, um, it's much, much easier to get get that nice clean line because you're painting the, you know, the layer of the mini that's going over the top of the one that's underneath. So it's just a good basic practice. It's what I always do anyway. But I really made sure that I looked over the whole mini first, knew exactly what order I was going to paint everything in so that I didn't uh, put myself in a position where I might need to touch something up because I painted in the wrong order. So mentioned there about having the, the colors ready to go. Another thing that I did when I was choosing the colors was I picked a brighter color than what I wanted to end up with because I knew that my um, hot, well, my, my shading at least would come from using washes as opposed to layering. So because I knew that lots of washes would be going on, that would be darkening all the colors. I started with a brighter color than what I wanted it to end up as so that when the wash went on, it brought it down to the color that I wanted it to finish as, and then I'd be able to highlight up from there. So then speaking of highlighting, this is an area where I really, really saved a lot of time here because normally I highlight over several layers. So I might um, so take an area where I would use a wash for an example because I use lots of washes here. So let's say for something like chain mail or hair where there's lots of texture, I would lay a base coat down um, then put a wash over the top and then going back to the base coat that would be the first stage of the highlighting then I would lighten that off do the next layer of highlighting and then maybe lighten again even again maybe after that depending on the contrast and the depth of color that I want to get but I do it over several layers whereas for these guys for pretty much all of it I think it's just one level of highlighting so laying the base coat down putting the wash over the top and then highlighting just with the, going back to the base coat and highlighting with that. So by just doing the one level, um, it gives a bit of contrast, a bit of depth, but it's pretty quick um, because it is just that one level. Um, when there were dark colors, so you can see here on Raj's um, um, jacket, it's a, it's a dark purple. Um, in some cases, uh, I think um, Sheldon sort of at the end, he has dark blue pants. Because the wash doesn't make too much of a difference there because it's already dark, when I highlighted, it was still one level of highlighting, but I lightened the base coat off for the highlight just to get that contrast so that when you're sitting back a bit around the edge of the table, those um, highlights and the contrast and the depth of color there can still be seen. I didn't want the the um, difference between the shading and the highlighting to be that small that you couldn't actually pick it out because if I was going to spend time on it I wanted it to be noticed. Um, and then in terms of uh, base coating and using the paints, normally I work with, uh, you know, as you should, thinner paints so that the paint goes on nice and smooth and you build the op opacity up over you know, a couple of layers. Here I try to, as much as possible, just do one layer of paint. 
Now with spots like the, the skin, it's really, really difficult to, um, and I don't think you should even try, to paint that in one coat because you would just be putting the paint on way too thick. Where some of those lighter colors are, light grays and, and, and the skin tones and those sorts of things, they needed more than one coat. But um, where some of those darker colors are, like the purples and the blues, um, even the, the pants in some cases because they were darker colors, I worked with some thicker paints there so that I was able to do them in just one coat. Um, so that was something that I was conscious of when I was um, looking at, um, yeah, mixing up the paints um, ready, to, ready to base coat, thinking about the colors, so the darker ones trying to do them in one coat, the lighter ones doing them in two just because it is, um, it is too difficult um, to do the, the lighter colors in one coat without really thickening that paint up and it, it, it just doesn't dry well when you go that thick. Um, so still sticking on the base coating, um, just in terms of the brush, using the biggest brush that I could to um, be able to paint the different areas without, you know, slopping paint on um, a, a, parts that were other colors. So when I first started painting, I think I had the term miniature painting too stuck in my head. And I was always using really, really small brushes. Like I would base coat with, I, I, I don't know if I ever base coated with a zero. I probably did at some point, um, but definitely base coating with like a size two brush when I could have been base coating with at least a size four. Um, I heard the advice more than enough times to paint with the biggest brush that you can. Finally, I listened to it, so I upped the size of the brushes that I was using. So again, this is talking about like quite a while ago. Um, and yeah, I noticed that I, I, I could still use it. Um, it wasn't like all of a sudden going to a bigger brush, man, I was slopping paint all over the mini. Um, you know, if there were more precise areas, just have paint in the tip rather than filling the whole bristles with um, with paint. But yeah, so here, um, I, the, the vast majority of my painting is with my regiment brush. Now that's the Army Painter one. It doesn't have a direct correlation to a number um, size, but from sort of comparing to some others, it's, it'd be somewhere around, um, it's not quite an eight, but it's probably bigger than a four. So it sort of hovers around that mark there somewhere. So most of my painting was with, was with my regiment. And even when I was doing, um, picking out the finer details and doing um, some of the finer highlights, that was still with my character brush, I think. So yeah, just always working with the biggest brush that I could which meant that I was able to cover more area quickly, but the brush wasn't that big that, yeah, I was slopping it onto other parts of the mini and having to, having to touch up. Um, and so another thing that I tried to do, and this is something that I do always try and do, and I have mentioned this in videos in the past, but I really did try and be conscious of it here, was to create some sort of a focal point within each of the minis so that when someone's looking at the minis that's a spot that their eyes are drawn to more than other parts and so that area that i worked out to be the focal point is an area where i spent maybe more time than others just so that i could um yeah um save myself some time on areas that really didn't need too much time to be saved. So um, a couple of those things that come to mind with Bernadette's um, sculpt, she has a, in the artwork um, on her player card, she has a floral um, dress skirt thing on. So I spent a little bit of time um, doing it. If you look at it close, it kind of looks like um, polka dots or almost like she's kind of wearing Christmas lights sort of things. Um, but yeah, I spent some time um, doing lots of different colored dots that matched the artwork. And so when you look at it from a little bit of a distance, um, so, so here she is here. Um, so yeah, so her skirt there, I, I end up doing a, a floral pattern. And yeah, from a, from a bit of a distance, I think that look is really, really sort of comes through well. I was really happy with how that came up at the end. And so that was an area that I spent a bit of time on and in, in, yeah, in the hope that when someone's looking at it, they're going to be drawn to that rather than, um, you know, maybe like her legs or, or something like that, where I didn't really do any highlighting at all. Um, 
with Amy's character, um, Aubrey or Audrey, whatever her name is in the game. She's got a, uh, a light purple cardigan on with dark purple stripes that run all the way around it, um, both the actual sort of main, like, body part of the cardigan, but then also the sleeves, and so I spent a bit of time doing that line work. So the line work took a while, um, and actually ended up taking a fair portion of the hour that I spent, but again, when, that min when her mini is sitting in the middle of the table, that's the part that stands out. And that's the part that I'm hoping people's attention will be drawn to. So um, yeah, by spending the time there, um, it takes people's attention away from other parts where I didn't have to spend as much time. So those are the main things that I consciously did to save on time. But the last thing that, and the thing that probably made the biggest difference was having that timer there. It, made me really, really aware of the amount of time that I was spending on different elements and it stopped time getting away from me. So say with the skin section, which is what I started with for each of the minis, um, if I got to the point where I was, and I, I, I don't know if I spent this long on any of them, but let's say for example, I got to like the six or seven minute, minute mark and I was still doing the skin. That's a bit of a wake up sort of thing of you're spending too much time on this part, get it done and move on to the next bit. Um, and there were a couple of points here and there. I can't think of them specifically off the top of my head, but there were a couple of points here and there with some of them where I did look at the timer and thought, oh wow, um, you're going too slow. You've only done this much and you still need to put the wash down and highlight and those sorts of things. And so it didn't compromise the quality or anything like that. Like I said, I, I am really, really happy with what I was able to get done in the hour with each of these. But yeah, just having that timer there, it was just a, a bit of a background thing um, and it just sort of kept me in check to make sure that I didn't get bogged down in any of the details that I didn't want to spend time on. So, like I said, the first thing that I did with each of these minis was to make a plan. I knew the order that I was going to paint all of the different elements in, I knew the colors that I was going to use, and I knew what I was going to make the focal point. So here with Bernadette as the example, being on screen at the moment, I knew that I was going to be spending my time on her, on that floral um, dress. And so I knew, like with her legs and um, different things like that, just whack a base coat down, a wash over the top, that's all the time that's going to be spent there. And so that really helped me to prioritize. And so by having the timer there ticking away, I was really aware of whether I was spending too much time on particular parts and whether I needed to speed up a little bit. I'm not gonna always have that timer there, um, but it was something that did really, really help. Um, and it didn't um, make me feel stressed or anything like that. Like, oh, I've really, really, really got to, you know, keep on pushing. It just was good to have there in the background. I mean, obviously the main reason that I've got it there is so that as you're watching, you can see how long it's taken me to get to different points. And you can see it took 56 minutes and 47 seconds to paint Bernadette. So you know the time that I've spent. But it was also there for me a little bit so that it was there in the background and it did just keep me moving. And yeah, so it, it was a good thing to have. And I reckon in the future, I won't have it there for every mini, but I might put it there every now and then just to, um, just to remind myself that I don't need to worry about all of the little details and make sure all of those blends are, you know, perfectly smooth. Because at the end of the day, it's about, um, you know, obviously enjoying painting, but then getting the minis to the table so that they can enhance the game. And when they're in the middle of the table, whether that blend is perfect or not is not going to be seen during the game. Um, and so, yeah, that'll be something just to, um, just to keep that in the back of my head. So yeah, so that's, those, those are the things that I did to, to cut down on the time. So like I said, these sorts of minis, I would typically spend an hour and a half to two hours on these pretty comfortably. And I was able to cut that down to, with most of them, 
around about the 55 minute mark. The only one that does go over time is Sheldon, and he is an ultimate character, so he does have quite a bit more going on in his sculpt than the others. You can see with Leonard here, it's basically just, um, you know, the skin, hair, his t-shirt, jacket, pants, shoes, and the axe. That's it. But with Sheldon, who comes a little bit later, he has all of those elements, but then he's got um, like military ammo packs and satchels and the Molotov cocktails and different things like that. There's quite a bit in there. And so I kind of knew ahead of time that I probably wouldn't get him done in the hour. Um, I think I ended up taking an hour five or an hour six. It was pretty close. Um, but because I left him till last, I knew that with the other ones, they were usually around about the 55 minute mark. So I thought in terms of painting seven characters over seven hours, I still had time up my sleeve. So I was happy to go a little bit extra with him just to get everything finished off. But yeah, I, I got really, really close to making it. Um, but then looking at where they all ended up after an hour, I was really, really happy with what I was able to get done. I wasn't sure if an hour would be enough. Um, and it really, really was. And that's in part because these minis are quite basic. There isn't too much going on there. But by knowing that I was only going to be spending an hour, it really forced me to prioritize my time and to really be selective over where I was going to, you know, try and um, finish particular areas to a higher standard. And it really got me to pick out what the most important elements would be and the ones that were going to have sort of the the biggest impact. So looking at Leonard here, his jacket is sort of where I spent um, most of my time with my highlighting. Um, and so, yeah, by laying down that base coat and then using that, that sepia wash over the top and then highlighting up, there is a good bit of um, definition and contrast in there, more so than in some of the other elements. And that sort of becomes the focal point there. And so I spent, you know, quite a bit more time highlighting his jacket than when I did, say, his pants, for example, because from looking at it, I knew that the, the jacket being bigger, bigger and more prominent, it would have more of an impact. And I think the other big thing that led to me being as happy as I was and as surprised as what I was at, um, what I could do within an hour, is just the simple fact that you don't need to do as much to get a good finish as what I think I've always sort of had in my head. Um, going into this, I knew that I would just be doing, you know, base coat, wash, and then one level of highlighting. I knew that's all I was going to have time for. And I think I thought, because I was only going to do that one level of highlighting, that they'd probably be looking a little bit flat and wouldn't have that contrast and depth of color that I usually go for. Now, granted, they don't, but with just that one level of highlighting, they do still look good. It is still enough. They do still have definition. You can see the, the folds in their clothes and those sorts of things. So it doesn't have to be the number of levels of highlighting that I usually do in order for, you know, the, the forms in the sculpt to come out, the contrast to be there. And I think that, that, that played a big part in there because what I did had more of an impact, I think, than what I thought it would. So yeah, really, really happy to see that because that's definitely something that I can take away and sort of know that I don't have to do three, four plus levels of highlighting within the hair, for, for example. It can just be one um, and, and it's going to give a good enough finish. So going forward from here, I think the biggest benefit that I'll take from this exercise is that it's going to help me prioritize which minis I spend my time on. So you know, if, if you think of a lot of board games, um, not all minis are created equal. So you know, there, there are usually ones that um, you know maybe are a bit bigger in scale, have more detail out on the board, um, you know, have more of an effect, or more imposing. Those are the ones that I'll spend my time on, finish to a higher standard, um, because they will be noticed out on the table. 
And then the the ones that, um, you know, just kind of fill out the board, the basic enemies, maybe the basic characters, things like that, this is the standard that I'll be painting them to. Um, you know, give myself an hour or so, you know, base coat, wash, one level of highlights, and that'll be enough. And I know from this that that is going to be enough, so I think I'll be able to spend less time on the lesser minis and more time on those ones where that time is going to have more of an effect. So if I think of a game like Mansions of Madness, um, which there is a bunch of videos on my channel for, you can, you can see what I've painted there. Thinking about some of the minis in there, I spent way too much time on some of them considering how much detail is in them, how often they come out on the table, and when they are on the table, the actual impact that they have. There are definitely minis in there that I should have spent maybe even just 40 to 45 minutes on, considering the level of detail that's in them. Um, and, but then there are other minis where I think I was um, you know, more than justified in spending the time that I did because they were bigger in scale, had more detail, um, more varied colours, all of those sorts of things. So knowing what I can do now in an hour and possibly even less with less detailed minis, I'll be able to look at a game and go, right, um, this one, this one, and this one, that's where I'm going to spend the majority of my time because those are the ones that are going to have the impact. But then this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I'm just going to paint you in 45 minutes to an hour because I know the standard that I can do from this and that's going to be more than enough for them. So, um, that brings uh, this video to an end as I'm finishing off Sheldon here. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching another video. There's seven minis in this one, so hopefully you've enjoyed me um, enjoyed watching me paint a few more than usual. Um, and I hope, like me, you've gotten something out of this video. Um, you may be in a similar boat to me where you think you take too long. Um, I can get, uh, guarantee you that this is a worthwhile exercise setting yourself a time limit and seeing what you can do in that amount of time. So yeah, I really, really hope that this video has been beneficial. Um, and I would like to hear if you think that this sort of format of video is one that you would like to see more of in the future where it's not just me painting just a single mini and talking about what I'm doing along the way and what I'm learning, but actually trying to um, like have some sort of an experiment, some sort of focus, whatever it is. Um, I, I, I would be interested in and in looking at other ways I can do video videos like this in the future. But anyway, um, so yeah, please do leave a comment down below, something that you liked about the video, something that you think can be improved. Um, and if you um, haven't stopped by the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel, please do so. Um, that's the main way that um, you'll be able to see what I'm painting at the time, what videos are going to be coming out. Um, I'm my most active on Instagram, so that's a good one to stop by. So you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll um, know what videos to keep an eye out for. Um, and please do like and subscribe to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. We do have some Kickstarters coming soon, so I'll be painting some new games on there. Um, so yeah, hit the subscribe button to, to know when they're going to be coming out. So I'll leave you to finish watching me painting um, Sheldon here. So this is Matt from the Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.